Hi, today is December 15th, 2009, and we are in Natick, Massachusetts. This tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Joan Craig, and our cameraman today is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus, and we are privileged to have with us today Jerry Eldridge, Jr. Welcome, Jerry. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Glad to be here. May I ask you when and where you were born? I was born in Fremium, Mass. In 1962. And did you grow up in Framingham? No, I grew up in Natick. You grew up in Natick. And where in Natick did you grow up? Uh, Ranger Road. And did you graduate from Natick High School? Yes, I did. And what year? 1980. What was Natick like back growing up in the 60s, 70s, and 80s? It was, it was different. In what was, way? Uh, well, the, the kids were a little, a little bit, uh, uh, let's see, they're... Uh, Friends that you grew up with? Yeah, they, they were um, more friendly to other people and their parents that didn't act the way they do now. Do you think that kids were outside playing more back then than they yes, are today? Yes, they didn't depend on cell phones and all the video games that they had back then. And back then, did you get places by walking or b taking buses, or do you remember uh, that? I did mostly by bicycle. Mm, bicycle. Right. Uh -huh. And you graduated in 1980, and where are you living currently? In, in Natick. And what is your marital status? I'm married. I'm married 22 years with my wife, Diana. And do you have children? Yes, I have two. Uh, my son is a senior, Josh, and my daughter's uh, in eighth grade, Jenna. And once you got out of high school, did you go on to college? Did you go to work? Or? No, I, I went uh, right into the service. Right into the military. Right. Did you enter out of Framingham or Natick? No, it was Natick. Why? Why did you join? My folks weren't uh, really financially stable back then. They didn't have enough money for college saved up. I knew I, liked, I wanted to travel more, and I liked ships at the time. So did you kind of get an idea when you were younger that you probably would go into the Navy? Uh, on and off, yes. And, and the Navy is what you joined. You mentioned yes. ships, so yes. I don't want to assume anything. But And you like the idea of travel and ships. Yes. And did any of your friends join back then? Not that time, no. So it was 1980 when you joined. Right. And where were you sent? Did you do a basic training? I did uh, boot camp out in uh, San Diego, California. Was that your first time out there? Yes. What was that like going out across? Different. They gave me three choices, one in Florida, Michigan, and California. And I've been to Florida. Michigan was too cold. So I haven't been to the West Coast, so ship me out there. And what was it like? How, and how long did it last? Uh, I was out there eight weeks. It was uh, sunny all the time. It was nice. I wasn't prepared to do all the running, though. But it was, it was physical, which, which helped me a lot as a person. Did you do running or any kind of activities in high school? Uh, not really. So you had to sort of Before get I in, went in yes. to get physical, physical shape. It helped mm -hmm. you get, get in shape? Yes. Did you receive any kind of advanced or specialized training beyond the boot camp? I went to, uh, uh, they sent me to overseas home ported ship training in Virginia, which told us how to be ambassadors and how to act overseas. Because you knew eventually you would go overseas? Yes. And how long were you in Virginia? Uh, a week. Now, at that point, had you established friendships with any members of? We get, to, but everybody took off. They had their own stations after that. So for a week, I met a few people. Okay. And after this ship training, what happened? Uh, they sent me to uh, Lake Harris, New Jersey, for uh, uh, I work with jet fuel, so I had to get trained on that. That was like two weeks there. 
So is it my assumption that there would be a ship that would have jets and other planes on it, so that's why you were Mostly working with that? I was hoping for uh, not a carrier, though. So a helicopter carrier I was on. And did you have experience like working on cars when you were younger? So this I mean, was all really all new to you. New. So on a typical day, um, doing this type of training, was it dawn to dusk or what? Uh, it was a good 12 hours a day anyways. Yeah. And so once you did that training in New Jersey, what happened? I, I get to the uh, USS Coronado. LPD-11. Now what is that as that compared to? It's an amphibious landing craft. And it, it uh, he carried the Admiral for the 7th Fleet. So you were assigned to the USS Coronado and what, where were you in, what port did you go it out was, of? It was home port out of Bahrain, which is an island off the coast of Saudi Arabia. What was it like for a Natick boy going to Bahrain back in the 80s? I'm not used to seeing a lot of sand. <laughs> and did they prepare you, though, ahead of time for uh, that? Yes, they during the schooling. They told did. you that it was going to be hot and mm -hmm. sandy. And What about going over on this um, amphibious landing craft? Uh, in interviewing other veterans, some who were being transported over, maybe not being Navy seamen, but talked about seasickness or, you know, close quarters. What was it like for you? Uh, I guess I had my sea legs at the time because my friends have boats around here that we go out in the water. But uh, that didn't really affect me that much. Well, that's good. And what about when you were off, when you had off time? Did you just hang out above, you know, or, or did you go... To, to your quarters, which no, it was above the seats. You know, all you can see is water at the time when you're out there. And what was your weather like going over? Uh, was, well, we flew over, and then I got the boat oh, out I there. See. Okay, we didn't, we didn't ride it over. Okay, so you you flew from the U.S. over to, right. and at that point, were you established in a unit? Is that what they called it? It was the air department. And how many were you going over? It was probably. Fifteen. And were these guys that you befriended before, during, or after? Uh, before. I was, on, I was on that ship for a year and a half, uh, 13 months. And what was happening over there then? Uh, we, did, we did see conflict in uh, 83, the Iran-Iraq War. And were you a part of that? Uh, not really, because well, we had a task force with us, and but we didn't really see, we stayed away because we had the admiral on board. And who was the admiral? I can't recall. But there was a sense that he was there, and therefore yes. Therefore, what? Fill that in. Therefore, he didn't want to get hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And. Before we interviewed, you were talking about the Coronado and its color. Talk about that. Right. Tell it's, us about it's that. It's white because it uh, reflects the heat of the desert, the, the hot sun. So this was specifically made for that or painted for right. that purpose? Mm -hmm. How many were on the ship? Uh, I'd say about 500. And did you have time off and then time on? Yep. How did we that had, work? Uh, we had duty every fourth day. We can go out right at, right at the end of the workday at 4 o'clock and then be back on, on board the next day by 7. So you could actually go off the ship? Right, and on one, what of, did, one, of the sh one of the ports that we were in. So do you remember anyone in particular that was kind of a neat place to visit? Uh, Arab ports. Uh, I think Pakistan was nice. It was decent, what I remember of it. <laughs> Were the people friendly, or did they kind of stay away from you? No, because a lot of, a lot of Navy ports, Navy ships uh, report there, so they're used to our presence. They were used to it? Mm -hmm. What about the kids? <laughs> uh, there are uh, American families stationed over there because the parents are, so uh, they, they're used to, probably not the language, but they're used to it. They have schools over there for them. 
And you were on the Coronado, you said, for how long? 13 months. And then would they tell you ahead of time whether you were going to stay or go on to another ship? How did that uh, work? After my time, I got orders to report to another ship. And when you were on the Coronado, did you work on helicopters? Is that No, I just did the fueling. I worked in our uh, pump rooms, below decks. Okay. All right. And so when you got word that you were going to be transferred, when was that? Uh, my 13th, after I got off of there, uh, it was probably a week or two because I, I took leave. I came home here for two weeks and I was assigned back. Were people at home glad to see you home? Yeah, well, 13 months with no leave. That's a long time. That's a long time, yeah. And did, were they hearing back home about any of the conflict? Um, since I was in, yes, they, they made it a priority to keep, keep up to date. And was your family worried about you? Mm -hmm. So seeing you must have been, especially for your folks, must have been a relief. Yes, it was. Any stories that you could share that you could tell them? Or? Pretty much what I'm telling you okay. now. They were interested in it. Yeah. We'd sit down at the dinner table and that's the whole topic. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, while you were over there, prior to leaving the Coronado, did you hear about any difficult times that the U.S. was having with, with regards to the war at that time? Uh, we, we had we could hear something on some of the TVs over there, but gladly we not we weren't in the conflict at the time. Sure. So after that period of time from the Coronado, where did you go? Coronado, I get uh, I met up another ship in uh, San Diego, and then uh, then we heard that the Beirut situation. Now was, explain the Beirut situation. Some people watching this tape may not know. Back in '83, uh, it was just uh, just conflicts over there that we had to, you know, get involved with. That's, uh, was this when they had taken some hostages? That was after. After, yeah. okay, but there were things and uprisings happening. Yes. And so, what ship were you assigned to then? The USS Tarawa, LHA Eleven. And what LG is that? One, sorry. It's a uh, helicopter carrier. Were you pleased to get a change like that? Back in at stateside, yes. But did your 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 thinking change after a while? Well, when I saw all the aircraft on it, it was it meant that we could take on anybody. Is what I was feeling then. So was it a little all, overwhelming? All the air power, yes. Mm -hmm. So along with helicopters, it also took on? We had uh, H-53s, which is uh, like uh, they drop off troops in the back of it. The uh, CH-46s, the ones with the dual blades on it. We had Cobra gun gunships with only a crew of two, the gunner and the pilot. Then we had uh, six Harriers, the jump jets. So uh, an array of different helicopters, and along with that, jets. Yes. It had to be huge. It was about 800 feet long. When you first saw it, what was your thinking? It was, it was amazing, really. <laughs> just never seen anything that big up close, knowing that I was going to be on it for a while. It's, it's and where, where were you when you went on it? Where were you when you went on to the USS Tarawa? What? Was, I was out in... Uh, I caught up with it in Long Beach, California. In California. So you were becoming a very experienced young man going back and forth across the country. <laughs> yes. At this point, what are you, 19 years old, 20? Uh, well, I, was, I just graduated, so it, it, almost 19. Mm -hmm. So how long were you on the USS Tarawa? Uh, about two years. And leaving um, Long Beach, is that what you said? Yeah, we went back down to San Diego. Mm -hmm. to pick up some more people. And then from April of 83, we took off for our Western Pacific cruise. And when you went Western Pacific, did you cross the equator on this ship? Yes, we did. And tell us about that. <laughs> it was different. 
Uh, I crossed out the first time on the Coronado, mm -hmm. and I went back over there. Uh, the things they do, they belittle you so much on there, but it's initiation. But uh, So to explain to those watching this, the initiation is when you cross the equator right. and they do yeah, this First you're known as a... Uh, Uh, but they do a little game with King Neptune and that whole piece, right. don't they? Yes, they do. It's sort of a rite of passage. Right. They they take some guys and they dress them as women, and uh, they they make them do little skits, like we have an Alvin Popeye up on there, and just they kind of uh, they make you feel about the small. <laughs> sure, sure. But it is something that continues today, do you think? I'm sure it does. Everybody has to have a little fun. So you crossed the equator, and did you know where you were going? Uh, at the time, yes, they made us known. I'm sorry? They made us known where, where it was going. They gave us a schedule of what ports we're going we're gonna to see. So on your way over on a daily basis, what would you be doing while you're going over? Just It's, it's a regular work day at sea, nothing. Unless they uh, they call general quarters, and you get to man your battle stations. And did that Just happen? A, a few times. Where were you when that happened? I was out in the Indian Ocean. And why did they call it? Because they had some planes that weren't uh, were in unrestricted, unrestricted airspace that weren't supposed to be there. Were they ours or were they some? No, they were. Uh, some were Russian. Some were from uh, other, other countries that didn't want us want our presence there. And did they fire on you at all? No, they didn't. Where were you going? Uh, we were going to Africa because we had to cross the equator. We came within 60 miles of Vietnam. And uh, uh, Yemen was another country that we came close to, and they were checking us out too. And at that time, were you hearing that there was uh, an increase in conflict in the Beirut area, or not really, no. Okay, so you were assigned to the Indian Ocean area and the coast of Africa. Mm. Well, not assigned to. It's one of our ports. That ports we, to go in, right? And when you went in, typically, how long did you stay? Uh, in each port, mm. uh, Hawaii was three weeks because we had to pick up three thousand Marines, and then. Uh, it was typically probably about maybe two weeks day. And when you were picking up the Marines, did they have to share quarters with you? They had they had their own area of the boat. We we got in contact with them a lot though. And you're picking them up to bring them, transport them? No, they uh, they were just there just in case any big conflicts. They were in the ready, so to speak. Right. So we had all the tanks and jeeps and just do exercises. So it was different. It was one I befriended. The, uh, he was from Swansea, Mass. So I, I hung around with him, but then he, uh, he got transported over to the barracks in Beirut. Okay. And a little while later, about a week later, the barracks blew up. Was he there? And he was one of them. So you lost this right. friend from Massachusetts there's a, there's that you... There's a total of like 240 of them. Got that, killed. That died. What was it like for you guys to hear something like that? We were on our way back to the Philippines, and uh, when that news came over, it was, it just wanted us to, you know, get us more mad than anything. But that's Did you want to be a part of it, or? Uh, in some ways, yes. And so you were back and forth going to the Far East, if you're in the Philippines? Uh, it was. Let's see, Hawaii, and we went to uh, Hong Kong, Thailand, Singapore. After, after Africa, they said that we'd, uh, we'd go to Australia, hit three ports there, but then the Beirut conflict started, so we, we spent a month out there, up and down the shorelines. And did you get any free time to? Not over there, no. Not there. <laughs> Now, what about when you mention um, Hong Kong, Thailand, the Philippines, and we had, we had time to go on on shore. You did, and yeah. what we can do is um, after this, we'll show um, 
one of the things, the, a couple of things, we'll show the, uh, the King Neptune certificate you got, but we'll also show the beautiful jacket you had made over in the Philippines. Did a lot of yeah. you do that? Uh, yes, Have them it, made? it was pretty cheap. And did you wear it on the ship, or were you allowed to? Yeah, no, we could when we went out on on the shore. Uh -huh. So, when you were on duty on the ship, tell us what you were doing. You you said you were below. We we took care of uh, any pump room issues that we had with the, working with the jet fuel. Then I was uh, signed away uh, as a damage control petty officer which takes care of little, little odds and ends around the ship, different areas. Were there ever any accidents? Jet fuel, I know, can pretty, be pretty potent, right? Yes. Uh, there was, no, we, uh, we made the whole cruise pumping a million gallons of JP-5 into the aircraft and not one spill. That's fantastic. That so was a lot of good training. What about and I'm naive to the idea of being on a carrier like this, but I, I have seen, and others I know have seen on the History Channel or on PBS when they've done a documentary and the dangers of being up there. Did you ever see any or hear about any of your fellow mates' close calls or injuries when something might be coming in or taking off on a, on a ship like that? I don't recall like any accidents there. So you had a pretty clean no, pretty safe. record. Mm. And how long were you on the Tarawa? I had two years. What was your favorite port? Uh, another thing it was uh, Mombasa, Africa. Tell us Kenya. about that. It was it was good. The people were very very polite, and it was not as rushed. They were just taking time, and uh, they would welcome us because they knew we were in the service. Very polite. Were you adventurous enough in your different areas to um, try the native food or things like that? <laughs> uh, at the time, I was I was used to steak and potatoes mostly, <laughs> but uh, that's what we all grew up on. <laughs> other, other than that, it was uh, I on occasion I'd take a bite here and there, but not too much. Um, while on the ships at any time were you involved in any high seas or typhoons or anything like that? Uh, high seas it was. Uh, the, the worst was coming back from uh, Hawaii back to San Diego. It was, uh, the, the waves were just massive. And it was uh, when you walk across, across the flight deck, it was like w walking uphill one day and then, then would roll and it was like running down the other side. It was, it was really, really tough. Especially in trying to eat during in the mess while you try to hang on to your plate. And no, would you get sick over something like that? I I, I didn't for some reason. So that's oh. good. That's very good. Hmm. Do you did you have adequate clothing for what you were doing over yes. there? And normally, what was it? It's just regular uh, dungarees, the light light dungarees in uh, over in Saudi Arabia because of the heat. Lightweight. Um, right. Mm -hmm. And denim shirts or? Uh, yeah, short sleeve shirts. And what about footwear? What would you wear on? There, there was work boots, though. Mm -hmm. Steel, steel toed, too. And what about dress? Did you ever have to dress? The, in the uh, summertime, we had the summer whites, which every time uh, we'd go into a port, it would be, uh, we'd have to man the rails, which everybody lines around, around the whole ship in their whites. And on my other boat, it was uh, summer blues, winter blues, sorry. And so the Tarawa wasn't your last ship? That was, that I've only been in two. Those two ships? Those two. Manning the rails always appears to be very impressive. Did you mm -hmm. feel honored to do that yes. too? Very much so, because it showed how, how nice we are. How, if we're, we're over there to uh, almost protect them, whatever port we're in. Getting back to the young man from Massachusetts, um, did you ever meet up with his family when you came home? No, I never no? did. And did you befriend others on the ship? Oh, yes. Yeah. 
Did you maintain friendships after that? A lot of them are still out in San Diego, in that area. How long did you stay in the service? Uh, it was a total of six years, five years active, one year reserve. Do you feel that your officers gave you good leadership? Yes, they did. Any stories you remember about that? Uh, no, they just did their job, protected us as well. And did you ever have to have any kind of medical treatment while you were in the service? <laughs> I, I did have an ingrown toenail once. That hurts, I know. <laughs> that's, it. that's it, though. <laughs> but your, your medical, it was good medical care? Yes. And while you were back and forth, how did you hear about the progress of the war? You mentioned television, but... Uh, television on board and... Uh, and some the uh, the certain radio CCTV I guess it was they, they have something like that. What about newspapers? I, yes, we have uh, we had a lot of news uh, news stations actually come on board. Some reporters and they took stories. Did you ever talk to any of them? No, they usually went to the uh, the main cabin, the officers' cabin. We, you mentioned some R&R &R time, um, sort of a little time off. For each port that we went to, we got a little bit. That was great. It was. It was a little relaxing. And a little different from your first ship where you said 13 months you didn't get any. Well, well we, had, we went into the other ports okay. over there, too. So every, every port we got, you know, if you don't have, uh, if you had duty at a certain time, uh, you couldn't get off because you had to stay on board all the time. You mentioned um, prior to this interview that you kept a journal. Um, what were most of the things that you wrote in it? Just uh, underway for a certain port, and a certain what I did out off the ship, and what time I got back, and just you know met up with a few people there. Just different different things. In your travels, did you ever meet up with anyone from Natick? Uh, no, the closest one was uh, I really made friends with is a uh, guy from Connecticut. You had a lot in common being from New England? Yeah, New England area. Yes. Um, do you look back on your journal and, and clearly remember some of the things as you read, yeah, read them? Pretty much. And was there any particular um, port R&R &R that sticks out in your mind that you're at liberty to talk about on camera? <laughs> uh, Philippines was, was nice. Tell us why. Uh, freedom of walking around the streets with beer in your hand. <laughs> it was and just a lot of fun. Would you go in a group or just a couple? How uh, would you do that? Probably up to about four. And the Filipino people were friendly? Mm -hmm. Did a lot of them speak English? Yes. Do you feel you were properly trained and equipped for anything that you faced? Oh, definitely, yes. Did you have to train anyone yourself? Did you take anyone under a mentoring uh, program? Well, it was just some of the new guys just told them what, what job to do on the, on the boat, but uh, other than that, just do your job. So when you first enter, what is your ranking? It was the uh, AR, which is an airman, airman recruit. And further on, after a few years, what was your ranking? And it was AA, airman apprentice. Then it goes up to AN, which is airman. Then ABF3, bed officer, ABF2. And you said you were in for five years active. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when were you discharged? We, I get out three months early, I surprised, surprised my mother by the way. Uh, did you know you were going to do that? I did, yes. Now I, how I, could you get out three I months put it early? In because I had enough time saved with mm -hmm. the leave that I was able to get out three months early. She wasn't expecting me to. And she was still in Natick? Yes. I told my father to uh, make an excuse to go to work and actually picking me up at the, bu at the bus station. Oh, be still. That's <laughs> wonderful. So when was that? Do you remember? 
I think it was in August of 86. So did you, did you come into port on the ship, mm -hmm. West Coast? San Diego, yes. And then did you fly home? Or? I flew into Boston. And so you got home a little early. Your dad picked you up. Mm -hmm. What was it like when you opened the door? Uh, my mother was in the same room. I, w I walked in there, and uh, it was it was great to be home. First of all, I finally out did my time. And now, uh, you were anxious to get yes, on with your life. See everybody, yes. So you would was it an honorable discharge? Yes. And at what rank were you at that point? E four. And is that sort of the equivalent of a sergeant in the army? Uh, Maybe. I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, any commendations or decorations? Uh, I get the uh, Good Conduct Award for four years, uh, two expeditionary medals, a sea service deployment ribbon, uh, meritorious unit accommodation, mostly for the whole ship where they were. Sure. Individuals with just the good conduct. What were your feelings? You said you were glad to come home. What what kind of feelings were you? Relieved that, that it was over, but still, I still kept uh, and watched the news and papers and see how things were going. And when looking back, did you have any close calls with regards to any kind of combat or? Um, close calls was uh, over in Beirut, uh, a couple of shells hit near the water, which is, it grew me up a little bit. <laughs> was it expected? Was Not it? really, because at nighttime you can see the shells going back and forth in the mountains. When they land near, near your ship, a couple hundred yards off, it makes you think. And do you think that was sort of a miss on somebody's part, or? Well, they knew they were, we were out there, Okay. so they took a chance. And no damage to the boat, a uh, ship, no, sorry. No, there was damage to uh, one of our helicopters, though. They came back and uh, I guess somebody took a, a sniper took a shot through and it uh, went into the, through the window of the uh, helicopter and went out the side, the other side of it. Nobody was injured though? No, but the crewman was sitting right near the window where it went out. Did, were you aware when helicopters went out and didn't come back or did you have a fairly? Uh, well, I was hoping that they'd all come back, but one one didn't. One of the Cobras, they were um, showing off and somebody, and he went up two, two sideways, and they, they, lo they got the guys out, but they lost the plane. When that happens, what happens to the pilot? He'd probably get reprimanded. When you came home, did you discuss with your family um, your experiences and what you had done in the service? Yeah, they wanted to know, they were definitely curious. And did you join, you had mentioned that you were five years in and then reserve? A year in reserve down South Weymouth. And why did you decide to do the reserve? It was part of my, part of my time. At the time you could do six years. Did you join any veterans organizations when I, you came back? I never back? did, no. I guess I was still too young to, even now I haven't. Did you receive any veterans benefits, such as hospitalization, GI Bill, I, or insurance? I got the VA loan for our, our first condo. But no, the GI Bill, when I went in, they didn't have it. And when I, when I get out, then they reinstated it. So I kind of missed out. Do you attend any reunions of your old group? Uh, no, because they're like too far away. But you said you still do keep in touch with some individuals. Some of the individuals out there. Have you seen any of them? Have you been not, back not to for San a while, Diego? No. Mm -hmm. How important to you was serving in the military? It's, it's very important. Uh, I love the country so much that I want to do something for it if I could. How do you feel it affected, or did it affect your life going forward? The memories will always be there. Uh, And you had mentioned when you first went in that you had to get into shape. Do you feel that it, it gave you physical and mental discipline? 
Uh, yes, because I knew where I was going and going to be and what situation, so I had to get in shape. Both. And looking back, is there, I know you had mentioned your friend from Massachusetts, but was there any kind of memorable experience, character, or humorous experience that you can share with us? Humorous, probably just, uh, the humorous one was probably just uh, crossing the equator and going through all that, all that fun stuff. And the first time you went through, you were... I had to take, get the initiation. You got the initiation. And then the second time you went through... I got to give the initiation. <laughs> which was a little different, yes. wasn't it? <laughs> Above all, is there a thought, an incident, or anything you would like to share with your family or others who will be viewing this tape? Uh, just... Or is there anything that we haven't asked you or any additional comments that you would like to make as we close this interview? Uh, I think I might have wrote something down. Uh, I'd just like to say that I enjoyed talking about the experiences that I had and hope others will enjoy it too. Uh, but, hmm. Well, your family is going to watch this, mm. and others are going to watch this. So they'll, mm. they'll get a sense of what it was like for a young man. I mean, you were only 19, 20 mm. years old, early 20s, when, mm. when you gave your time to the country that you loved. Right. And we want to thank you, Jerry, Jerry Eldridge, Jr. Thanks for coming in today. Right. My pleasure. You're thank welcome. You.